Welcome to the Bushy Black Brother Network. Good afternoon and welcome to Urban Lifestyle Cafe. I'm Michael, your Bushy Black Brother. And I'm here with my co-host and wife, Alicia. Hello. And we had a recommendation on a show or a movie um, that was on Netflix that my intent was not to actually watch it. And even though Alicia said, I think I'm going to watch that, I was like, yeah, I'm not watching that shit. But... We had a recommendation, and when we get recommendations, we normally say, okay, we'll try it out. And the one we're talking about is the controversial Bright. Yes, with Will Smith, my favorite actor. Will Smith, Leisha's favorite actor, my least favorite actor. Because I just feel he's not a good actor. He's just plays the same person and tries to use cliches to make himself look cool. So... That's my thoughts on Will Smith. But that's not what we're reviewing. We're actually reviewing the movie that was on Netflix. So what happened with this? I'll I'll give you the first end because Alicia and I was talking about it. So the critics gave it like a 29. And they said this is one of the worst. No, this is the worst movie of the year. So... That combination, Rotten Tomatoes, gave it a combined 29. So, which would make it a little more interesting, the actual people um, who reviewed it gave it an 89. So, what makes that interesting, because there's about three movies that actually came out that had a big disparity between um, all three. And we saw all three, right, babe? Yes, we did. So when you looked at, let's go through the list real quick. When you saw, what was the first one? Justice League. Right. Um, one to ten. What would you give it? Um, well, you want to do a rating all over again for it? No, no. Just don't, eight, don't even, you don't even have to remember. But okay. if you can remember some of the movie, well, how about what you would rate it? I mean, it was, a, I would say a seven. Yeah, a seven. Yeah. And I I think rolled in that way. They had it once again at a very low percent. Let me give you an example of you know what the data said. Uh, the data had Justice League. Wait a minute, I just missed it. Twenty seven percent was the bright. And 89 was that. That's what we said the first time. But Justice League had it at, the critics had it at 41, and the people had it at 78. So we were still in line with what the people were saying. So when you looked at the, when we just saw The Last Jedi, uh, what was your thoughts on that? I mean, if you had to rate it. That was like a six. Really? Yeah. So Alicia said a six. I had it at probably a four four and a half or so because i hated it i just thought it was terrible so the people had it at 56 which was like wow the people was kind of in line um because alicia on the high end and me on the low end but that average came to like 56 but the critics had it at 91 so these three controversial movies came out and that's why we ran into, let's just see what people are talking about this bright and have a review of it. So on the surface, what did you think about the movie, Batman? I really thought it was, it was good. It was really good. Besides the controversy, which totally, um, I understand why they would see that because it was, a flip side of, you know, how we were saying that they were making the aliens or the fairies like black people. Mm, yeah. Minorities. And, yeah, the minorities. And so um, it was interesting how they did it, you know, how, because at first you didn't quite understand it. And then you kind of got to, you know, as it was going along, you kind of like, okay, this is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And so um, 
Will Smith did a good job because he wasn't overpowering the whole movie. Yeah, he didn't have to carry the movie. Yeah, he the didn't. The story had to stand on his own. Now, the critics didn't think so. The critics thought it was uh, a combination of two different genres that didn't mix. Um, fantasy and cops dramas. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean... So, go ahead. I mean, that was just being a... What else would they would do? You know, he would be somebody on the side trying to fight, you know, for the fairies. So, again, what the hell do you want it to, to, to be? You know, on one end, if you you wanted it to be fantasy and it had to be cop, you had to kind of combine the two in one way or another. Well, they're not writers. Well, they're not. They're critics. They're, they're right, critics. not writers. Yeah. So, um, which makes this interesting. Um, let me give you some quick background. Um, the writer actually was some guy, and I'm gonna say some guy because I'm not giving him a lot of credit because the only thing that kind of stood out that he did was that movie uh, that we liked called Chronicle with um, Michael B. Jordan was there with these three kids that actually got powers when they touched this meteor and it was flying through the air and blah, 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 blah. But he he's a young writer. Um, he was born in 1985. So his concepts is like really little stuff like that. So so we look, we're talking about David. We're talking about the writer. The yeah, one David. Who, oh, no, that's no the Max Landis. Mac, okay. Max Landis. Yeah, He's the okay. one who wrote it. Okay. Um, so really no major background. Right? All right. Right. So automatically most people would dismiss him. But here's the key to David Ayer. So he he doesn't stand out. But let's let me explain his pedigree. So he grew up in Los Angeles, California, and when he was kicked out of the house with his from his parents, and he hung out. In California, so he knows the grittiness of the cops and everything like that. And he he went to the um, the Navy and came out and he started writing, you know, and then directing. So he did Suicide Squad, right? I seen that. Um, which you know, there's a cross between people who liked it and who didn't like it. Um, I didn't think it was great. I thought it was okay, but I didn't think it was great. He did a movie called End of Watch. Um, he did the series Training Day And what I didn't realize was He wrote Training Day Okay Okay So He wrote that And But he wasn't the actual director But he wrote it So His background is like Cop based movies And shows and stuff Right So he has a really good background with that So when you watch the movie you kind of got that feel right. of the corruption with cops. Yeah, that's the, true. The cops really having that dialogue back and forth. Yeah, that's true. So knowing who he is and what his background is, I started saying, oh, now I see the movie a little different because I see what he was trying to do. Right, right. But on the other side, he brought in the fantasy part, and that's what made it a little unique. So the other writer probably brought in the fantasy side, and him... Because David Ayer also writes and directs, he probably said, look, let me do the cop side. Because as I directed, I wanted to kind of look like this. I wanted to kind of be a little raw like this. So a combination of them two created something that I thought was interesting. We both agreed. It wasn't a great movie, but not a bad. It was a good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. It really was. Yeah. So when you looked at it, let's, let's stick with the cop portion. When you... When they started showing up about them being police officers and riding around, and did you think about fantasy, or did you, or the, or was you comfortable with this was about cops? Um, Other than the way he looked, I seen it as fantasy. You still seen it? Yeah, as fantasy? because you know, because everybody besides Will Smith being a human, everybody else were um, that was around him was fantasy. Okay. So, but when you see, but later on, you they start to bring the other police officer, or then you see the corruption, right? Right, you know. So then it was okay, so you got fantasy and corruption, 
of the police squad, right? In the police department, and right? Right. So, but what you're saying initially, you saw a lot of the fantasy because they start to show off with him going back to work, mm-hmm. but he because he his, beats down a fairy that was in his bird box. Well, yeah, that that starts it. Yeah. That really starts it. And but then the his it starts daughter. off really with the bad dream. Oh yeah, the bad dream and. Then he rolls up that he wakes up from that because he got shot, which they never went into, but he got shot. They went into it later on. Right. But he got shot. He had some time off and he got shot because his one partner, of the orcs. Yeah, his partner yeah. didn't want to back him up when the orc, he knew, his partner knew his he was getting shot and just basically like stood there and allowed him to get shot by an orc. No, in his mind. Right. And then when he chased him down, um, the thought was he let him get away. But he was going back to work and the orc shows up. So immediately I'm like, what the hell is this orc thing? You know, where is this coming from? But if I didn't have a background of Lord of the Rings, I wouldn't know what any of these people were. And I would be confused. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So were you confused with the characters or you was familiar with them, but you didn't relate it to anything? No, I wasn't confused with the characters. So we it saw was, it was a, stuff. Yeah, it was really an easy watch. I mean, mm-hmm. it wasn't complicated. You know, you got the idea from the dream that his partner was an orc. So when he came to pick him up, you know who he was. Right. But what I'm saying is, did you know what, what who orcs were? Uh, no, I didn't until you told me. Yeah. Until you told me, it was like, oh, that was from Lord of the Rings. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. So that Ooh. that universe or that that building of uh, that fantasy world exists all over the place. But the best way to relate it to is the Lord of the Rings. Right. So remember, they went to a part of the time to- town where the elves were. So if you remember in Lord of the Rings, the elves had this lavish area that the elves were better than everybody. And but now they show them in a part of like. Los Angeles that was like the Beverly Hills type they had all the money and the, the expensive cars and then the butlers I mean not the butlers the chauffeurs were the orcs okay yeah that's right so but in the Lord of the Rings the orcs were like brutes they were just you know brutes barbarians or whatever like that they weren't smart they weren't anything they were always the enemy right in, in, in that way but this show showed that they was incorporated into the society, which they didn't give the background how that occurred. Right. And they didn't because it was I was thinking when I seen them, I was like, OK, so were because they would they how they refer to them was like they were the lowest of the low. Yeah. yeah. You know, saying, the, the, you know, and so they wanted they didn't want um, him, the, the orc to be a police officer. They were right. finding ways to. Get him kicked off the force. Yeah, they wanted him off the force because they was like, these people are nothing like that. But so it would have been nice if, like, they would give some background on how they did come into come together. Yes. In that way. I mean, they had enough time to do that because it was only like one hour and fifty nine minutes. But I think the what they wanted to do was get into. Um, I think the director wanted to make sure you saw that it was almost like a a cop show when you find that. You know, they find some drugs or they find some money and then the good cop try to stay away. He tries to get away, kind of like, ah, I don't want to be part of this. But it just happened to have fantasy. So I want to get into the, the main issue that most people outside of the critics are really looking at. And it was the racial aspect. Um, because you kind of said, yeah, the, the arts is like the blacks or, or the Mexicans or the Hispanics. So they kind of dressed them in that way. They kind of addressed them in that way. Yeah, because when when they were when they were dealing with the gang, you had the Hispanic gang, and then you had the org gang. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why do they look like that? <laughs> yeah, but, but they look like if they were. Re- I mean, they wore the clothes like regular gang members were wearing. They was just orc gangs. So remember, the other gang was sitting on uh, on the other side of Will Smith's house. So that was the black gang, but you never seen black gangs after that. All you saw was the Hispanics and the Orcs. Right. Because you know I mean? apparently that part of town is where most of the Hispanic people had lived. Right. Exactly. So the, the real basis of the whole movie was they found a magic wand. 
And the reason why people was chasing down the magic wands was if three magic wands got together, it would bring back the Dark Lord. Well, not only that, because the wand gave them uh, wishes. So it gave them wishes and powers and whatever like right. that. Right. But, you know, because that's why everybody wanted it. They didn't care. Whereas the other part of it was they got to get three wands together. Mm-hmm. The other, the one, the other part of it was the you chase to get the so they, they can get wishes, right? So they all can get wishes from the wand. And the police officers were who were come there to, for backup, basically want the wand as well for themselves. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that group within the the police force department were corrupt to the point that they would sacrifice Will Smith. And especially the orc, because they wanted uh, Will Smith to go out and kill the orc, because they were saying that guy didn't. He could have got you killed. You should. You better kill him now, because if you don't kill right. him now, right. he's going to kill you. So, it was trying to convince them with that. But they showed up at a place where um, they showed up at a place that they had some disturbance, and uh, then people were shooting them. But come to find out, there was somebody that was up there who had. Um, someone who was being captured. When they went up there, they found a fairy right, um, right. that was there. So there's a difference between the fairy and the elves. So I was kind of confused. I'm like, wait a minute, is she an elf or a fairy? And then it was like, no, she's a fairy. Yeah, she's a fairy because she was one of the sisters. Yeah, one of, of the, the Tika, sisters. Of T- Tika? Was yeah, it I, think Tika? It was, I think it was Tika. Yeah, it was Tika. It was Tika. Yeah. Because she was, there was like, the all the elves are, I mean, all the fairies are like sisters. Right, right, right. And so Tika was there, um, where and they like they had the sister like just like strapped or. So one of them, she like, she took the wand from one of the other sisters, but she trapped her in some kind of spell that locked her up. Um, one of them up like that. So, but come to find out, they was the one fairy was trying to take the. Wand away from the other, the main fairy, because the main one wanted to bring back the Dark Lord. Right, If you right. remember the Dark Lord in The Lord of the Rings, it was the one person that was trying to kill all of the elves and the hobbits and so on and so forth. So she wanted to bring back the Dark Lord. So again, you had reference points to a, another series that if you didn't understand what these other fantasy characters were, you saw that. Even at one time, they showed a dragon flying above Los Angeles. I was like, damn, did you see that fucking dragon? So that was the world that he was living in. But I'm going to go back to it still was a police drama. So when they found out that Will Smith killed the other police officer, they were trying to protect the, the girl, the, the fairy with the magic wand. And Tisa. they started, yeah, so they tried to get away. You know, right. as they, they tried trying. to get away, mm-hmm. the Hispanic game saw, gang saw them and said, they got a magic wand. Yeah. So they was chasing after them in that way. But in the meantime, the, the orc was part of the, the group, and and the orc people hated him because he was a traitor, and he turned on them. He's not a true orc, blah, blah, blah. He was never, what was that, blood, blood something? There's got some ceremony that said you're not um, blood something. So they had to go through a ceremony, but he never did that. He became a cop. So as they were trying to get away, the the complexities of the orcs and the gangs with the orcs, and then you saw some elves, and then you saw some fairies. fairies, and then Because you saw the elf was of, part of the FBI? Yeah, so they had that that um, magic squad, you know, the, the, M, the MBI, the magic bureau of investigation that they 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 looked after stuff with magic associated to it so it made it it was and again we're saying this because it is really interesting but i think what the critics wanted it to be is something more either away from the cop genre genre and more to the fantasy or more to the fantasy and less of the cops but i think he played between the two and I'm not sure which side overwhelmed the other, but I think it was good enough. Did you feel was it good enough, or it should have been more fantasy, or, or more? No, it was based- good enough. It was good enough. The, the, the only thing, I, like I said, the only thing I think that um, my curiosity was is how did the orcs get there? How did the fairies get there? How mm-hmm. did the elves get there? You know what I'm saying? How right. the, and then how are there? You know, 
how do they, they're affecting were their slaves to come in there and then um, they allow them to be free. You know, those are the things that I was just curious about. Yeah, because I, I think the background would make you more comfortable. What they did with this movie is they, they just threw you into it. Everything was what it was right now. You know, you had elves that was in charge of the, the that FBI or what you call it group. How the fuck, why did they get to be the FBI? I mean, yeah. the head. Why did, he's the head and then the humans are under him. Why were they? Why did the why are the elves in that certain part of town really um, privileged, and no one else is? You know, you don't know any of that. You you see that the orcs are the bottom of the barrel, but are they bottom below the blacks? Are they bottom below the Hispanics? But this they dress and kind of act like you know the minorities that are around, but the fairies are kind of like. Who knows who they are? Right. You know what I mean? Right. But, and there could be a lot more because, you know, going to the fantasy genre, there's a lot more than just those couple of threes and four types of um, races that's around. So, again, all of that is very interesting. It's very interesting because they added it in but didn't give you an explanation other than it exists and everything exists together. And the racial racial aspects of people being treated to that, the corruption within um, the police department reminds you of we don't want this black guy in our um, in our department, so we need to find a way to get this black guy out of here. Yeah, because you've the, seen that before. Yeah, you did. But now it's an orc, or there's a so, woman in here. Women aren't qualified. So you think that the the way is twisted and the controversy um, is makes sense or not makes sense but works out in, in you know f- for because you know everybody didn't like it because of how they did the movie you know so there's there's two so are you talking about why the critics didn't like it or why some of the people didn't worry like about it? the critics critics oh so the people didn't like it because they depicted minorities these orcs like minorities right exactly they they didn't say they didn't like the concept of the movie, they said they didn't like how the orcs were depicted. So you're not getting that negative of how bad the movie was. You're getting a negative of the portrayal of the orcs inside of there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. So I got which, you. Which, which, it made it interesting. Yeah, you know what I mean? It did. I'm kind of like, I hear what you're complaining about. So Chance the Rapper has uh, some tweets that's out there. And he was trying to say... This is this is throwing it in your face. This is really throwing it in your face to say that, you know, um, this is what's going on with minorities right now. But they're using the fantasy aspect without just saying this is what's happening right now. You know what I mean? Right, right. So they, they're just breaking it up like that. So I so that's how I, I saw it. Um I like it because so I'm going to tell you one one of the main reasons I really like it because Will Smith really didn't play the hero in there like he normally does. He wind up being the character that saves everybody. Well, he was a hero, he, but he wasn't that you know overpowering. The overpowering. He's the just he knocks everybody out the way and to he say he stands Yay! alone like I am the hero of them all. He, I got they you. Didn't, they didn't put him in that. I got you. But um, if you look at most of the characters, I'm looking at the cast. He, him, and Naomi Rap- Rapace. I don't know how to say it. Rapace. Naomi Rapace. Yeah, Rapace. She was um the girl with the dragon tattoo and everything. So she she was great. But she was okay in here. She she was more mute than anything. She didn't say much. Uh, and when she did, she was just kicking everybody's ass to get the wand and killing people and going from that. But it's just Will Smith. And then uh, a couple of new faces or unfamiliar faces. So if you look some of these people up, he's like, oh, yeah, he played on that. Oh, OK, whatever. Oh, yeah, he played on that. But he carried the movie, but he didn't carry the movie. I think the movie really carried itself. And that's why I think maybe the critics didn't look at it like I I wanted more an explanation. 
is so many plot holes that was in here that should have been filled and no they wanted to try a combination of two genres and i think it worked i think it works that you would want to see more i want to see more i want to see and will smith don't have to be in there i no, think this, I mean, this universe or this this thing kind of works well will smith is going to have to be in there I guess. I mean, so and the thing is, is that the sec if they do do a second movie, it would be good to if they explain a lot more about the the other people, the orcs, the fairies, and uh, yeah, I would love to find out how they got to be part of this society, because remember, one of the orcs said I was chilling in Miami. I didn't have these problems. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, but how long ago were you chilling in Miami? You know what I mean? When was when did that start? When did you be able to be comfortable to go from Miami to California? When did that happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's just interesting because I'm looking at this and saying, okay, it's just how are they doing the storyline? If it could be better, um, how can they do it the next time with the next movie? Because people, I, I just like I said, I, it was good. I liked the fact that I, it didn't have to. And another thing is, I was thinking it didn't have to be a police story too. So I think the I mean, police th- story made it unique, though. Right. So uh, again, you know, if they didn't do the police story, that means Will Smith accidentally found some information and basically become the the main character to save the world. So, and that's another reason why I'm like, uh. I'm thinking about it like, yeah, to change, you know, what kind of storyline. So if the same director does it, at, I don't know if that'll be the case. So the 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 movie Bright, the name Bright comes from um, the people who can hold a wand. Right, and he was able to. So well, we, there we, was, we already knew that at the beginning. Yeah, we knew that because at the very beginning we. So knew once that. they start talking about it, I said, you know what, he's going to be a Bright. Right, but because we because they said only certain people can be able to be a bride, right? Blah, 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 right. Blah. But we only, expected it to be a little bit more in like the middle part of the movie, right? And it didn't come through until the very, very end, which I thought was like, okay, that was I like that. I like the fact that they didn't make him, you know, this bright at the very big, be- very beginning, nor in the very middle of the movie. So that's why I was saying I liked it. That's why I was saying that. He wasn't a hero because I thought they would make him a bright somewhat in the middle and he would use that power throughout the rest of the movie in order to show that he has the power. And all of a sudden he knows what the the spells are called and blah, 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 blah. But they didn't do it. They took you all the way to the end and which said if he's a bright and they took the one, what else can he do or what else does brights do? Uh, define what else, but they they never gave you any of that. So he kept with I'm I'm gonna stick to my storyline. God damn it, I'm not gonna explain much of anything. I'm gonna stick with the cop drama scenario all the way through. It just happens to have fantasy characters in it. I think he stuck with the more with the cop genre than he did with the fantasy. He just allowed fantasy characters to be in it you know what i mean right right. which which in a way i like that a lot more you know what i mean that's why i think i liked it because i don't think they did a great job with the fantasy characters i think they just they were who they were right and exactly there wasn't no crazy flying in the yeah, air yeah you know, or, you know or, pixie dust <laughs> yeah, or, or dry, dressing up spells yeah or, or wearing um, um what is it the princess Flair yeah, dresses. Yeah, that bullshit. So I mean, so none it, of that occurred. Right, right. So that's why I think it, it wound up being, you know, pretty cool. I thought I thought it was pretty cool. It wasn't, it was, I, I was anticipating, once again, I was anticipating saying, once again, this stupid Will Smith movie, they try to make him another star, and it, it was just terrible. No, it wasn't. And he played good enough in here. He didn't play like, I hate him, or... Like in Suicide Squad, I really didn't think he should have been in it. I, I really think they kind of centered too much around him. I think if they took them out, I think Suicide Squad would have been a lot better. In here, he didn't center him in the middle. He had him as the main character, but 
everybody else had their 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 say and time and it worked out really well. So he played a decent character in this one that I can respect what the director was doing with this. But um other than that, yeah, the controversy of the critics and the and the the people, I would love to see what's going to happen because if you read a couple of articles, they're looking forward to see what people's going to say now about Black Panther because there's so many people who regardless of if the movie wound up being bad, they still going to rate it high. Hell yeah, why wouldn't you? I'm, I'm just, One is we I know for a fact why they're going to rate it high. A lot of black people want to, is going to rate it high because because it's, no, a, it's a black movie, right? That's it. They so don't care how bad it is. Once again, this is like the Obama movie. It doesn't matter if Obama know what the hell he's doing. This is a black guy running. But I know, and like Lee should know, Ryan Coogley is an amazing director. He has shown to do amazing things. So why wouldn't he not do this? The only thing that we would have a problem with is if he didn't use the right special effects people that will show things looking a little cheesy. But it didn't look like that based on the reviews. I mean, on the the actual trailers. Right, the trailers. The trailers looked amazing. And then it looked like this is just going to be some intense shit going on. So I'm looking forward to that. But they said when it comes to big movie, fantasy movies like this, you know, you got a, a cross between critics as well as um, viewers, viewers yeah. and audience. So that's going to wind up to be interesting when that come out. I know what mine is going to be because, again, we're a follower of the director. I'm, I love Black Panther. I love his story more than I love him. The story had just wound up to be really, really good. So with that said, mm, what do you rate it? I said seven. Really? Yeah. Uh, just a seven. Well, yeah. okay. That's boo, that's that's not bad. I yeah. liked it. You know, not great, but I, I liked it. I'd give it a little more than a seven. I, I, I wouldn't give it a seven and a half because seven and a half means this is a good movie. I want to see it again. Now I want to see it again before another one comes out. I think it's worthy to I, see it I, again I, before I think it's, that. Yes, it is. It's worthy to watch it over again. I mean... Um, the good thing is it's on Netflix, so we can always yeah. watch it again. And they ain't gonna take it off because yeah. they own it. Yeah. See, so Netflix so, own it. I think that was it was really good. That's why I gave it a seven. I didn't want to do six because I think that was mm, still, that would put it down to some really bad movies, right? But I would say seven because that keeps it right there, right? You know. So I say a seven two five because I think I like it a little more than you because I I I've dug in a little more than you have, right? And uh-huh. I I like the fact that uh, the director is who he is now that I know what his background is. So that's why I probably want to see it again because he did Training Day and then he did um, Something Nights with Keanu Reeves and and Forrest Whitaker. Um, it was a movie that was cool. I don't know if you remember that one, baby. It was one that Keanu Reeves, I think they killed his his family and or his wife or his girlfriend, something like that. And then he turned around and... Is Street Kings. It was called Street Kings. Okay. It was cool. It was. I like that one. And Keanu Reeves played really decent right there. But at the end, Forrest Whitaker had all the money in the wall, and Keanu Reeves was going to kill him. And he was like, no, don't kill me. Look what I got for you. And he broke open the wall, and, and Forrest Whitaker, who was like the chief of the department, was was extorting everybody and putting money in the wall and everything. But it, it was cool. That was a That was a good one. And he wrote that. You know what I mean? He okay. wrote it, and I think he directed it. Yeah, he directed it, too. So, really good. He's, this guy has a good eye for the um, what goes on in LAPD. He he has a really good eye for that. But I say a 725. I can't put it up to 7.5 because then it's, it's closing in on very good movies. And this one was just a good movie. Yeah, it was. And it was a Netflix movie, so yes. I get to give him credit. So, with that said, too... Um, 11 million views in three days on Netflix, which will equate to, if it was at the box office, would we would equate to $98 million for a three-day box office take. And that was only for the first three days. Turn around, and the cost of it was $90 million. Right. So Netflix may not have recovered their money because, again, they don't go for people who's buying it. 
They go for the people who owns it, who owns Netflix, who's going to see it and going from that. So um, it was a big gamble, but it kind of paid off. For Netflix? For Netflix. It yeah, paid it off. Did. And so, you know, like, it, and I mean, they did push it nicely, though. You know, the um, with the trailer and mm-hmm. and highlighting, you know, bringing the attention to the movie. They did a nice job on that. So this is one thing I read, too. They had an article about Netflix advertising. So if you got millions of subscribers, you don't have to advertise on TV. You advertise to your subscribers. So as soon as you cut on Netflix, the first thing that pops up, bright. Netflix yep. original. Yep. Yep. The trailer starts. Yep. You can say, oh, this is interesting. Let me check it out. So you kind of, they can force you to, to keep looking at it. Sooner or later, you're going to say, let me see what this is about. But overall, it's, they, they'll advertise and throw that right up front so you'll be able to always look at it and go from that. Mm-hmm. So they have a different way now that they found that they can be successful with their advertising. So I thought that was interesting too. So Netflix is like, look, I'm going to have movies. We're going to do movies. Some of them are going to be released in the theater. But overall, we're just going to advertise to our people. I just think $90 million was a lot of money. Probably so, but you know, they spending that kind of money with the crown. True. Yeah, there's some TV shows that spend kind of money like this too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's true too. So, seven and seven to five, uh, Urban Lifestyle Cafe, um, dot com. Um, not dot com. <laughs> Bougie Black Brother dot com. Urban Lifestyle Cafe. Get that on Google Play or iTunes, and you can get it directly. So get your newest episodes on iTunes and podbean.com. Or get the app, and you can be able to go from that. But if not, leave us quick comments on Bougie Black Bro. Any reviews you want us to check out, just reach out to us. Yep, and just say, hey, that's what you need to do. And, oh, y'all need to see this. Because we'll check it out, unless it's something totally out of our genre to say, we don't look at bullshit like that. <laughs> Come on now. Follow what we review. But uh, we do do horror now and then, but it has to be a really unique type of horror, um, especially if it's Korean or Japanese too, because I love those. But um, find Black Women, uh, IG and Twitter, Black, B-L-K, find Black Woman, and Bougie Black Bro, Twitter and Instagram, and the Bougie Black Brother network as well as on youtube bougie black brother network so we got some things on youtube too so if you happen to be on there watching something and say hey i want to listen to them on what they reviews is about just slide on over and you'll be a okay so thank you very much for stopping by urban lifestyle cafe anything booby no darling so we'll see you next time every Wednesday, 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 Wednesday for our podcast on movies and TV shows. Thank you very much and have a happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year.